Hi, this is Bill Conrad, and it was a wonderful debate, the governor's debate on January 6, 2022. We started out with a card draw to select where the candidates would seat, and then it went on from there. Very good debate. We had, let me look at the numbers here. We had, uh, oh, five, 468 meals served. Uh, a lot of great Republicans there, so it was really a blast. And again, um, on these debates that came out, I want to talk a little bit about it. We handed out this ballot, and the ballot was handed out once everyone was seated. Everyone got one ballot. We had two people controlling the ballots. Uh, they turned them in after the debate, and we made sure we had eyes on and full control. There were 344 ballots turned back in. Uh, which means there, because we voted, each person could vote for three top candidates. There are 1,032. Actually, there were more uh, ballots than uh, 344. Um, we had probably a lot of missed ballots, 50 or so or 60, when they didn't vote for three people. So we threw those out. We couldn't keep those. But we did watch the ballots. And uh, my wife and I finally added those up the last couple nights. And they were under control. No one played with them. And these are legitimate uh, polls. A couple of things I want to say about the polls. Remember, we're from northern Nevada. We're all Republicans here. Some candidates had more people than others in the, uh, inside the um, debate. But overall, I think it gives a feel, at least northern Nevada, of the popularity of the candidates. And if you watch it, I think you'll get even more of a feel. So without further ado, let me go through these names. Um, Lufkin was not at the debate, but he was on the poll, so there was nine people. He got nine votes, which is 1%. Now, that said, there's a possibility that there could be a little gaming with those nine votes in that um, if he wasn't there and people voted for him, maybe they wanted to give their candidate a little bit more um, uh, you know, support by voting for somebody who would not get many votes. Zimmerberg, off to the left, um, he got uh, 2% of the votes. Tom Heck, uh, and there's a tie for, um, that was eighth place, but then there's a tie for sixth place. So it was Tom Heck and Dean Heller both tied at 46 votes, which was 4%. At fifth place was Guy Nori uh, at 8%. John Lee got, uh, by the way, Guy got 85 votes. John Lee got 87 votes at 8% for the fourth place. Third goes to Michelle Fiore at 198. So there's a big drop there. The top three were closer, and there was a big jump there. She got 19% of the vote. So the drum roll for first and second place here. So we're, we're going to tell who came in second, and you're going to figure out who came in first. Very close, I think, for first and second. And it was uh, Fred Simon at 259 votes at 25%, got second place. And the winner is, drumroll, Joey Gilbert at 282 votes, 27%, and he was first place. I want to say they were very close. Joey had quite a few folks, like I said earlier, in the audience. Uh, Fred Simon did exceptionally well in this uh, debate, I think. And Joey also did well. They, they really stood out well. Um, Michelle Flory, of course, was in that top three. So the top three, I think, were, were pretty darn close. You know, there was a little batch there, the top three. Uh, John Lee, of course, being fourth, it fell off there. And as you see from the numbers and the spreadsheet. Well, again, I want to thank everyone for coming. Um, a couple notes on this. Uh, we are live streamed. Uh, we, we were um, on YouTube and we put it on one of our secondary channels. We were concerned about being taken down in the debate. And uh, we could have had a lot more people live streaming it. We, at one time, we had 168. Then YouTube decided to cut us back to 125 people at any one time watching it. So they, um, they put some limits on how many people could watch live streaming. YouTube will not be the solution in the future for our live streaming. Um, it's, uh, it's sad to see that. Um, finally, um, since we put it up, we've had almost, uh, I think, 25, 2,600 views. Uh, since it's been put up on a standalone. We thank you very much. We look forward to the Lieutenant Governor's debate coming up next month. If there's any questions, please um, go to our website or give me a call. This is Bill Conrad, 775-527-4276. I run some of the backside with Karen, uh, my wife, and uh, Ray Rocha, of course, uh, is out there. 
and we have a group of volunteers. Hey, I want to really thank the, in this, and we're going to give them more credit, but the silver sponsors, we have about 10 or 12 silver sponsors. Without them, we couldn't do a lot of these extra things like streaming, and they are so important. I want to make sure next time that those silver sponsors all have special seating up at the front because they really help make these events possible. Also, the life members. Well, without further ado, we'll see you in the next debate. And uh, take care, and thank you for coming. And I'm proud of the Republicans for showing up. All 468 of them showed up. And finally, as we finish up, let's watch, uh, since Joey Gilbert's number one, we'll watch his video clip from his website. Guys, the problem with the homeless is not that there's a lack of programs, lack of assistance, lack of education, any, anything to help them. It's a lack of them wanting to help themselves, all right? At the end of the day, at the end of the day, you have to care enough about the homeless and enough about your community to enforce the law, all right? And when faced with either putting, being put in jail or cleaning it up, they're gonna choose the latter. It's that simple, and that's what we need to do. We need to stop playing these games and letting our communities become unsafe. We, we build a tent here and we're supposed to solve the homeless problem. Anybody been downtown lately? Anybody been on the strip? That's how we fix it. You know, you don't, the compassionate side of giving a few bucks so they can go get high or drunk or use it for whatever, that's not, that's not caring for the homeless. Caring for the homeless is stepping up and doing what's right for the community and for the people that you live and that you are, are, you are held accountable to. Thank you. One of our greatest presidents once said, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. My name is Joey Gilbert. I'm running for governor of Nevada. I've called Northern Nevada home my whole life. My father, a Marine Corps veteran, taught me how great this nation can be with a little hard work and appreciation of our nation's values. And I'm teaching the same to my daughter. Right now, we're at a crossroads. Our basic freedoms and way of life are under attack. The courts, the schools, and big corporations that influence every aspect of our daily lives have been captured by a powerful group of elites who want to enslave every generation to come. Make no mistake, this next election is for everything we hold dear. Ask yourself, what have our leaders done to bring back this republic's freedoms enjoyed for generations? And why are they silent on the key issues affecting us every day? Our elections, this nation's most crucial tool for democracy, are broken. Our criminal justice system, which boasts an almost 100% conviction rate, and our out of control prison industrial complex is also broken. Our schools, which should be the best in the world, are now springboards to racist ideologies that teach our children to hate each other and hate this nation. Great schools attract businesses which create jobs, and jobs create prosperity and security that can be shared by all. We fought our governor's unconstitutional and political closing of our churches, and we won. As director of strategy for America's Frontline Doctors, we put effective therapeutics and life-saving medications into the hands of Americans that don't want to be part of this experiment. And I'll be taking on the election fraud that has plagued this state for decades. Patriots from across America and worldwide know me from the Health and Freedom Rallies and the Reawaken America Tour. I love Nevadans, I love this state, and I love this country. As a proven fighter and master communicator, I'll take the bureaucracies to task and hold them accountable. Watch any of my talks online or attend a live event and you'll see exactly how I think. Go to gilbertforgovernor.com for more information and to donate. Find me on the only social media platform I'm not censored on, my Telegram channel. chance to win. Yeah, it's the Sands. A busy day here at the Atlantis with the candidate dinner and debate. We'll take you inside and take a look. Organizers were expecting around 450 people and looking at the turnout. Lots of people here ready to listen for firsthand what the candidates have planned for the Silver State. Nine candidates taking the stage, including former U.S. Senator Dean Heller. We want better schools. We will never shut the schools down in Nevada when I am governor. Attorney Joey Gilbert. More importantly, take the handcuffs off our officers. Let them do their jobs. 
at the end of the day, enforce the law. And Las Vegas City Councilwoman Michelle Fiore. I'm not going to talk to you this evening about what I'm going to do as a governor. I'm going to talk to you about what I've done. Attendees say that tonight is all about getting Dan to Mason Nelson. says having a debate like this so early speaks to the interest in the upcoming midterms. Everything that's happened from the Trump administration to the current Biden administration and the polarization of everybody, I think there's an awful lot of interest from people on both sides. In Reno, Abigail Verwick, News 4, on your side.